Do you want to know the top 11 things that I do not like about Virginia Beach? That's what we're talking about today and we're starting right now. Hey, my name is Sam Sansalone and I'm a real estate agent in Hampton Roads, Virginia. And if it's your first time, welcome. Hit the subscribe button, the bell notification, and also the like button. If you like this video, it really helps me out greatly. But I help people from all over the world move into this area, Virginia Beach and the surrounding cities. It's awesome. If you have any questions about this area, moving into this area, please let me know. I have my contact information in the description of this video and I'll do whatever I can to help you. Now, today we're talking about things I don't like about Virginia Beach 11, to be exact. Uh, I've talked a lot about things I like also. I've done pros and cons videos about this area, but I wanted to get a little bit deeper into the specific things I don't like. Now, make sure to watch to the end of the video because the last couple are ones that I think are most important for people that are moving here and staying here for a long period of time. Now, number one is, it might be a little bit of a surprise, the beach vibes at the beach. I don't like them. I'm not a beach guy. This is funny because I've lived here my entire life. I'm just not a big fan of the beach. I'm not a really big swimmer. The sand and like, trying to get all the, all the preparations to go to the beach and like, oh, the stands in the car and all the clothes. You gotta plan this whole event around going to like 10 minutes down the road. Most of my friends love the beach, uh, but it's just not my thing. And there are cultural differences in each beach section. I've talked about each beach in various videos in the past. Sandbridge, Croatan, uh, Chicks Beach, the North End, they're all a little bit different uh, and have different vibes. But again, the fact that it's just the beach in general is just not my thing. Now number two is the jets, the jet noise. Like I've talked about the jet noise many times. I cannot imagine living in an area where the jets are flying constantly. If I walk in front of my house and I start talking to my friend and then the jet flies by, I have to stop for 40 seconds and wait for it to fly by before I keep talking again. That's what happens. You talk, you're talking, and then you And then when it's done, you can get back to talking. Super awkward. There are specific spots where the jets are the noisiest. Just know that most of the city does not have this jet noise, but the specific parts where it does, does not get fun. Now next, it's muggy, especially June, July, and August, and into September, where the uh, the heat goes up to like the 80s and 90s, and sometimes, every once in a while, hits 100. But in addition to the 90s temperatures, the humidity is so incredibly high. So you feel it immediately as you walk outside sometimes in the summertime. So uh, this is something to keep in mind if you have like frizzy hair, if you just don't like the hot, the heat. And of course that brings the mosquitoes. They're everywhere. If you go outside, sit down, give it 30 seconds to a minute, you'll see the happens all the time in the summertime. So we value screened in porches, sunrooms, they're super helpful because that keeps the bugs away. Now number four is no major sports teams. Yes, this is very frustrating for me. I'm a huge sports fan, baseball, basketball, and football primarily. There have been many times where we've talked about trying to get a team here. It's never worked. Uh, to be honest with you, there are a couple reasons why I think it has not worked. One is uh, there's always a city in the United States that uh, seems to be more up and coming, has more growth coming, uh, it just seems to, to better support a, a team. Our area just is not set up, in my opinion, uh, for the amount of influx of people on a regular basis coming to a specific spot in the city. So if you've got a, a stadium of 20, 25,000, 30,000 people on a regular basis being filled, it's just hard because the roads aren't really designed for handling this kind of thing. I just wonder if this is an easy thing to pull off. In addition to that, the, the culture here, there's a lot of military here, and so there are a lot of transient people coming in and out. And because of that, it's hard, I've noticed, for a fan base to really start gaining traction here for a long period of time. We actually have lots of fans from uh, like Washington, for instance, Pittsburgh, Dallas, uh, a lot of Cowboys fans here, but there are kind of Cowboys fans everywhere. You might root for a team uh, closer to this area, but also there are some minor league teams here that I've taken a liking to because that's what we have here. The Norfolk Admirals, a minor league hockey team, and the Norfolk Times, which is a minor league baseball team. Those are the two uh, that are the most popular, and some college sports teams that are also pretty popular that I like to watch as well. Number five is the roads are so confusing. I've been here my whole life and still get lost in specific spots in Virginia Beach. First of all, I want to talk about I-64, Interstate 64. Well, it's called Interstate 64 East and West. Well, the implication there is that the road goes east and west. It does sometimes, but it's shaped like a horseshoe. So as you see on the map, you see it goes north and south 
in some parts, it goes east and west in other parts, and like northeast, and so, it, just, it goes every direction. And so in Virginia Beach, and around there in the Norfolk, if you're taking I-64 west, for instance, you're gonna be going north, towards Norfolk, and towards the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel. If you're going 64 east, you're actually going south or southwest. So it's awfully confusing because anybody that's coming here for the first time, they're like, I wanna take 64 west, why am I not going west? Alternatively, I-264 I east and west actually goes east and west. That is the road that connects from Norfolk east all the way over to the ocean front. That's the actual east and west interstate. So there are two I-64, 264 east and west Super confusing, uh, just look at the map and make sure you know which one you're using. So one thing about a lot of Virginia Beach roads too, not the interstates, but they are very windy. So you might be thinking you're, going, you're on one street and you kind of take a like right bend and then you think, oh wait, this does not look like where I thought I was. So it's a bit confusing, especially if you just moved here. There's an area called Linhaven Parkway and Rosemont Road. There's a section in there where the roads come together and in this section, for me, I've lived here all my life and it's still confusing. I still can't exactly remember, is this the right turn for this? Just know that that as a local, I feel like I know the map of this area incredibly well, but even I don't know all the roads and can get a little bit confused every once in a while. One thing I would mention to help you is to think of the most important roads, like think of the large arteries that connect to the, all the neighborhoods and the shopping areas. Keep in mind, know where Indian River Road is, also know where Lynn Haven Parkway is. That one goes more north and south. Any river road goes east and west. A couple others to mention are Princess Anne Road and Independence Boulevard. Those also run east to west and north and south. And also Virginia Beach Boulevard, which runs east and west also. Those are pretty significant roads that connect to lots of areas. And if you know those, then you can start learning the other roads that come off of those and you'll start knowing the city a lot faster. The next is, <laughs> there are many pizza places down here that are really, really good. There are a couple that I've had that I like. It's not like it's a wasteland. Now granted, I love pizza. I think about pizza all the time, uh, but I just can't eat it well as much because it affects my stomach. But even still, if you look online, reviews, talk to some people, locals here, they'll have some favorites. Primo Pizza is a pretty good one. Uh, uh, Windy City Pizza is one of Chicago deep dish style. And there are some other ones that are good, but there aren't any that I know of that uh, people would drive out of the area to come to. Now next is the nightlife is pretty sparse. So. I'm in a time of life where it's not as big of a deal for me, but I grew up here not really having a nightlife option uh, except for downtown Norfolk. Lots of friends that I have and I, we really couldn't figure out the best things to do at night. We would spend a lot of time together, but you know, nightlife was a little bit harder to come by on a regular basis. There's great concerts in Virginia Beach. There's an amphitheater here that has lots of the big time concerts um, that we went to a lot in the summertime. There's also downtown Virginia Beach, which is town center that has some performing arts centers, music uh, spots. There's just not a whole lot. There's just really small places here and there you might try and find, but you might find yourself going to downtown Norfolk after like seven, eight o'clock at night if you're not looking for a restaurant. Now the next one is parking at the beach. Now remember, I'm not a beach guy. So I don't go to the beach very often, uh, but I'm pretty familiar with the parking situation there. It's not very fun. It's kind of expensive sometimes too. You'll see uh, lots that start at five or $10, but again, in, in the touristy times, they can go up from there. But if you're a Virginia Beach resident, you can get much reduced parking in specific garages. Now granted, the area near Fifth Street on the south end of the ocean front near Rudy Inlet, has some parking uh, meters that are free between 5 a.m. and 10 a.m. But then after that, it's, it also costs. I'll drop links for the specific cost for the lots and areas in Virginia Beach uh, for the city lots. And you'll find some restaurants and some businesses that will also sell parking as well, especially in the summertime. Now, parking is a lot easier to come by in the wintertime, the fall, uh, because the tourists are not here as much, obviously. Now, for instance, if my wife and I want to go on the boardwalk and go for a walk, we'll go to one of these city lots and pay to park there, especially the one near uh, 31st Street and near the Hilton. Uh, that's one of our favorite spots because it's just north of all the action right near the ocean front. It's high enough north to where you can walk up towards the uh, the higher number of streets and it's quiet and then you can still access the southern side if you want to. Now that lot is just on the other side of Atlantic Avenue across from the, from the ocean. You can park off the coast several blocks and it's a further walk, but just keep in mind if you park in some, some spots, you're parking in neighborhoods that people live in. So please be mindful of signs, places that you can't park because um, there are lots of signs that prevent you from parking in some uh, residential areas. The next is the housing is expensive compared to other areas around here. If you're coming from specific spots in the country, you might find that the areas here are cheaper. For instance, Virginia Beach, uh, the, the average sales price of a house in this area is just over $400,000. That's a lot for some places in and around this area. You'll find some uh, cities in this area that are much less than that. 
But Virginia Beach has a specific uh, demand for it, mainly because it's closest to the beach, uh, and the name Virginia Beach has a has a, a value attached to it also. But also the demand for schools as well. We've seen a jump in prices in the last uh, several months to a year, but even still, relatively speaking, you get a lot for what you're paying for, especially in lots of neighborhoods close to the ocean. But just know if you don't need to live in Virginia Beach, for instance, but you want to be close, there are other cities that have more affordable real estate. Uh, you don't have to spend the the higher average price that you would uh, in Virginia Beach. Now that being said, there are neighborhoods that are under that average price that are totally fine. Those numbers are skewed because there are areas that are over a million dollars as well. So there are plenty of places under 400,000 that I think you know a lot of people uh, actually love, but the numbers make it sound a lot higher. Now I love the real estate in Virginia Beach, don't get me wrong, but it is relatively expensive compared to other cities in this Hampton Roads area around Virginia Beach. But if you're moving from the north, you're moving from the far west, you might find these prices are still kind of surprisingly low for what you're getting, especially because the real estate taxes are not that high either. The, the taxes in Virginia Beach are just over a dollar per thousand dollars of assessed value. So if you're buying a house that's $400,000, you're probably paying around $4,000 a year in taxes. And number 10, the oceanfront, I'm going back to this again, the oceanfront's incredibly touristy. That's the reason why I don't like the beach mainly. The ocean itself is great, I love that, but the tourist stuff is just drives me crazy. Um, mainly because when you drive down Atlantic Avenue, all you see are these same these t-shirt shops, like every third or fourth one. There are these weird businesses, there's like maze games and like these, these activities that people go to and because there's nothing else going on. It drives me crazy, just not a big fan of all that kind of stuff, so I just I really avoid it as much as possible. Now if you like the oceanfront, you like just doing the ocean things, you might not care about this as much, but for me, oh my gosh, drives me nuts. Now this one I think is really helpful for, for people that are moving to this area for the first time. A lot of these areas around here look very, very, very similar. They look almost all exact. So when you're driving through lots of this area, you might think you're in one spot, you're actually in another spot because there are so many neighborhoods. There are so many sh strip malls and shopping centers. Every five to 10 minutes you'll drive, you'll see something else, something else new. Um, that's great for the accessibility. If you live in Virginia Beach, you get access to lots of things and you have lots of housing options. But that being said, as you get used to these areas, get acclimated, the nuances of each area will start kind of separating themselves from each area. So you'll, you'll be able to understand exactly where you are as you go, go along. But when you get here, it's gonna feel like this big swath of land with all the same thing over and over again. It will change, I promise you, but just keep at it. <laughs> and then add to the fact that some of the roads are harder to navigate, and so it can get really, really frustrating. And so I just encourage you as a person who's moving here for the first time, you can do this. It just takes some getting used to the roads, understanding those main roads I was telling you about first, and then just noticing the little subtle differences in each area, then you can really know the map and you can know this place real simply. I've done a lot of videos about Virginia Beach and specific things about Virginia Beach and neighborhoods. I'll put a couple here so you can learn more about Virginia Beach. If you have any questions about the area of Virginia Beach or the areas around it, please let me know. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel as well and I will see you on the next video.